deer meat. It has been increasingly evident the growing interest in history of our nation, the, this area of our state of Oklahoma, and even our own locale. The interest in looking back to beginnings began to increase no noticeably even before bicentennial plans. We finally became old enough as a state to be anxious to revive and collect stories about our own history, to have a real interest in the past and in places, names, and things of a past day. I personally gauge this by calls received and questions asked about my own small contribution. What is a flag and why a flag? A dictionary definition states, flag, a piece of cloth, cotton, silk, or wool, varying in design, usually attached at one edge to a staff or cord, and used as a symbol of a nation, a state, or organization. A flag is used to indicate nationality, to indicate a division of a nation, or when used by a school, a college, or organization to indicate membership and loyalty to the school, college, or organization. The word banner is frequently used in speaking of the flag of a college or organization. The word ensign is used when speaking of naval or military organizations. We know the record of the 14 flags over Oklahoma. A Texan said to me, that couldn't be, they only ha can claim seven. There had been an Oklahoma flag before the present one. A book, Oklahoma History and Government by Thoburn and Barrett states, the third legislature passed an act in 1911 adopting an official state flag for Oklahoma. The device was as follows. A white star edged with blue in a red field with the figures 46 <coughs> in blue on the star. It was designed by Mrs. W. R. Clement of Oklahoma City who brought the matter to the attention of the state legislature. That is uh, the end of the quotation from the book. That flag did not attract popular f f favor, and the military, the National Guard, did not use it, partly because of its red field. To quote from a piece by Miss Eula Fullerton for Oklahoma Chronicles, two years after its adoption, there began a clamor for a new state flag, and this movement reached a climax in 1924, when Dr. Joseph Thoburn, at that time, executive director of the State Historical Society, began an organized campaign to change the flag. <coughs> Dr. Thoburn was a historian well versed in historical facts, folklore, myths, and symbolism of Oklahoma, both white and Indian, and he urged that the flag of the state should reflect some of the background of the state and its people and traditions. He decided that a movement as important as changing the flag of the state should be sponsored by a strong and well-informed organization. After careful deliberation, he chose the state organization of the Daughters of the American Revolution as the sponsoring group. Dr. Thoburn contacted Mrs. Andrew Hickam, then the state regent, and asked her to accept the responsibility. Mrs. Hickam accepted this and appointed the committee to plan the campaign. A statewide contest was publicized and many designs submitted. Several of the designs considered best were selected by the committee and sent to then Governor Martin E. Trapp, who asked uh, Mr. Baird H. Markham Adjutant General, 
and Mr. Charlie Barrett, former Adjutant General, to assist him in making a selection. And this is where my design was chosen. I had not known of the contest, or it had not registered with me, as I was at that time busily engaged in preparation to be married a week before Christmas. I um, moved to Oklahoma City where my husband was employed at the Liberty National Bank. Um, Mrs., uh, Mrs. Hickam had learned from a visit to Shawnee where I grew up that I was now living in Oklahoma City and of my study and training as an artist. She told me about the contest. My husband didn't come home in those days for lunch and I had most of the day to work on an idea. Knowing nothing about state flags and unable to find more than four or five black and white drawings at the uh, Carnegie Library in my attempt at research, I took um, a small sketchbook and went several times to the um, state capitol on the rickety little streetcar that some of you remember as I was nervous about driving in what I then considered heavy traffic. I made several trips meeting Dr. Thoburn and being conducted about the historical society then in the basement of the Capitol, state capitol. We were allowed to submit more than one design. I came up with three. One of them, I had used a, a buffalo in the design and uh, learned later that that is the, uh, uh, on the uh, that is on the Wyoming state flag. Now, uh, any uh, dictionary or encyclopedia halfway new has the um, pictures in color of all of the state flags, but at that time it was just practically impossible. But the time I learned about it, there wasn't time to write to Washington and do all those other things that might have been done to help. The uh, winning design, which is the present official state flag of Oklahoma, um, uses an Indian war shield as uh, the background. And uh, the uh, description, as it appears in the Oklahoma statutes, is this. The flag has a sky blue field with a circular rawhide shield of an American Indian warrior decorated with six painted crosses, symbol of stars. The lower half of the shield to be fringed with seven pendant eagle feathers and superimposed upon the face of the shield is a calumet or peace pipe crossed at right angles by an olive branch. The blue of the field signifies devotion. The shield, defensive or protective warfare, but always surmounted by and subservient to the olive branch and peace pipe, which betoken the love of peace on the part of a united people. And uh, the uh, state name um, was added in 1941. I don't have them on the these little uh, miniatures that I made because uh, I did these as collector's pieces and it is as it was first adopted. This design was sent uh, to the proper legislative committee and um, on March the 25th, 1925 was passed and sent to Governor Trapp for his signature and uh, became uh, a law immediately upon being signed by the governor. On April the 2nd, 1925, the new flag was first raised over the Capitol. 
I am asked about uh, my uh, background and uh, I, uh, as has been said, grew up in Shawnee and I had uh, an unusually good training in high school uh, in uh, art. And uh, then I went to Columbia University in New York to Art Students League. I had a year at OBU in Shawnee after the death of my brother. I stayed at home for a year with my parents. Um, I studied at the Audubon Tyler School of Painting in Chicago and also the Art Institute. My uh, parents and one brother brought me to Shawnee when I was a year old, where I grew up and uh, lived most of my life, with the exception of my years spent in study. My father, R.W. Funk, spent his life in the furniture business, and my mother was a pioneer librarian of the state and twice president of the Oklahoma Library Association. Some of the uh, amusing things that have happened have been in my introduction. I have been erroneously introduced as the uh, designer of the Oklahoma seal, of the Oklahoma City seal, and once as the designer of the United States flag. <laughs> I have felt that old at times, but I couldn't be. <laughs> and then uh, one introduction, and it was from a good friend of mine who got carried away and said at the end, the most interesting thing is she's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.